was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. The breach was far too wide. From the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. So you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there chains free my soul for the first time I had home thank you Jesus for the blood of life thank you Jesus it has washed me white thank you Jesus you have saved
Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, thank God for the blood tonight. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Thursday Night Bible Study. We are happy, we are glad, we are excited to have you here with us in person, to join us here with us in person, and also to join us via live stream. There is no better place to be right now than in the Word of God, right? No matter what you're going through, the answer is in the Word of God. For every problem, situation you may be going through today, the Word of God have over a million answers. God have over a million answers and solutions to every problem we may be going through. Things may look bleak, dark, like me, our backs may be against the wall, but praise the Lord, God has the answer to bring us through once. We call on Him and we trust Him. We depend on Him and rely on Him. Tonight, trust God. And that's what we're doing tonight. We're, gonna, we're, we're studying the, the Word of God week after week. Well, thank God for the blood, right? It's because of the blood that we can have access into heaven, that we can boldly come to the throne of grace and fellowship with Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the one who died on the cross, gave his life, shed his blood to redeem us, ransom us, to bring us into one being in right standing with God. It's all because of the blood of Jesus, the sacred, the shed, the saving, and the shared blood of Jesus. Well, tonight we continue our, our study in part 31 of our series with, we, we have entitled, What's Coming Next? And actually, this week we're wrapping up and closing up this series as we've been going through the book of Revelation. We're in the last chapter of the book of Revelation tonight, Revelation chapter 22. So we wrap up this series, and next week we'll look at Israel and Bible prophecy, what the Bible says about Israel. Bible prophecy. Next week we look at that, but tonight we'll, we'll wrap up this series, What's Coming Next, and our subtopic tonight is Final Word. So if you have your Bible, open with me to the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22, and we'll read verse 6 and verse 7, and as you are turning to Revelation chapter 22, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this, another opportunity, Lord God, where we can sit here in our living room together as your people, Lord, to worship you, to praise you, to study your word, and to listen to your voice, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for life. We thank you, Lord God, that we are all alive and well, and that we can come and fellowship together. Thank you, God, as we open your word. We also open our heart, our mind, our spirit to hear from heaven. Fill us, Lord, with your word. Lord God, give us in-depth knowledge, teaching, revelation, insight into your word. And God, I pray as the word is preached and teach tonight, think through me, speak through me, Lord God, that it speak with clarity, fluency, boldness, and with signs following. Confirm your word to those listening, Lord God. I pray that you touch, heal, save, deliver, and set free. I am all yours. I surrender to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we also remember, Lord God, to pray for Israel. You said pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for Israel. Keep them as the apple of your eye. Hide them under the shadow of your wing. I pray, God, that they find their safety and security in you, Lord, in this time of trouble, Lord God. This time where nations and people seek to hurt, 
see the dis seek the destruction, even the annihilation of your people from off the face of the earth. Form an impenetrable wall of protection over Israel, Lord, and cause them, Lord, to have the victory and crush every enemy that try to curse your chosen people. And we also pray, Lord God, for the people who have suffered in injuries and who and the families of those who lost their loved ones in the recent shooting in Lewiston, Maine, Lord God. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you comfort those who, the family of those who lost their lives, oh God. And I pray, God, those, those who are injured, I pray for a speedy recovery. And we pray, God, that such acts of terrorism, of gun violence, cease, Lord. We pray against gun violence. Every form of violence we pray against. We pray, God, that peace rule in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Final words are very important. As a dying person will want to say things that he kept hidden all his life. Maybe he has some secret that he's been living with that he want to make known. Maybe he has some unforgiveness or some hatred in his heart that he wants to make it right. Maybe he wants to finally give his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Final words are very <coughs> important. And they are usually sincere and genuine before that person dies. A young boy last <coughs> lost his father to cancer. And as weeks later, when he returned to school, his teacher asked him, when he returned to school, <coughs> what was your daddy's last words? The boy, the boy replied, daddy didn't get to say his last words because mother was with him all the way to the end. Thank God that Jesus speak to us throughout the scriptures, throughout the Bible. And he also left his very last words in the last chapter of the Bible. He left his very last words. And tonight we are going to look at the final word of the final chapter of the final book of the Bible. This is the season finale, if you, <coughs> if you will, of time, space, and of all creation. And we've entitled this message, Final Word. And we're gonna, we're gonna discuss four things, four final things in this final chapter. Four final words. Number one, the Bible's final predictions. The entire scripture from cover to cover is filled and packed with prophecies and predictions of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus himself <coughs> predicted his coming in the Gospels. And then John who referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved, also predicted and wrote about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in the final chapter. Revelation chapter 22, verse 6 to verse 7. Three. Yeah. Six. And he said unto, thee, unto me, this saying are faithful and true and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done behold I come quickly blessed is he that keepeth the saying of the prophecy of this book praise the Lord 
I read back verse 7. And behold, I am coming speedily. That's Jesus yes. speaking in person. I am coming speedily. Blessed, happy, and to be envied is he who observes and lays to heart and keeps the truth of this prophecy, the predictions, consolations, and warnings contained in this little book. See, the resurrected, glorified Son of the living God, Jesus himself is saying here that he is coming quickly, speedily. And the word quickly or speedily or swiftly here in this verse doesn't mean at a fast pace at so many miles per hour. No, the word quickly, speedily, swiftly emphasizes here promptly without justified, without unjustified time lapse. It means suddenly, instantly. Paul writing to the church at Corinth would also speak about this fast, this quick, swift coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he wrote in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, In a moment, in a twinkle, twinkling of an eye, at the song of the last trumpet call, Paul also wrote, in the moment, suddenly, in the twinkling of an eye. Paul's words of Jesus' final mm -hmm. prediction that Jesus mm -hmm. talked about in Revelation 22. Mm -hmm. His, he also predicted that it's so swift as the twinkling of an eye. Now, how fast is the twinkling of the eye? How fast is the blinking of the eye? I, by the time I say blinking of the eye, my eyes probably blink three or four times already. The average time for a single blink of the eye is about 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 seconds or 100 to 400 milliseconds. When Paul was writing in the blinking of a, in the twinkling of the eye in the first century, probably at that time in history, that was the fastest thing he could think about on the body, the twinkling or the blinking of the eye. Perhaps if the Apostle Paul was writing this verse today, he would have used the analogy of how fast light <clears throat> would travel in a short distance. Or how fast light travel in one nanosecond. One, nan one nanosecond is one billionth of a second. That is the time it takes for light to travel at a distance of one foot, one nanosecond. It takes light to travel at a distance of one foot, or for electricity to travel in a wire at one, at a distance of one foot. Jesus' coming will be suddenly, instantaneous, very quick, suddenly. Those who are saved and those who are watching and waiting and praying for the Lord Jesus Christ, they, they'll be caught up to, to be with him. Those who reject him, those who criticize him, those who choose the things of the world and choose to live in sin, will have no time to repent. It will be in a split nanosecond. So fast, there will be no time to call on Jesus. There will be no time to repent of sin at that time. It will be so instantaneous, so fast. That's why John continued 
to write in Revelation chapter 22, verses 10 and 11. And he further told me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, and make no secret of them. For the time when things are brought to a crisis, and the period of their fulfillment is near. Verse 11. He who is unrighteous, unjust, wicked, let him be unrighteous still. And he who is filthy, vile, impure, let him be filthy still. And he who is righteous, just, upright, in right standing with, with God, let him do right still. And he who is holy, let him be holy still. You see, Jesus' coming, the prediction of his coming, the final prediction of his coming, it's so swift, sudden, that the person who is caught when Jesus comes, the person who is unrighteous will still be unrighteous. Let him be unrighteous still. The person who is impure and vile, let him be that way still. There will be no time for him to repent. There will be no time for him to call on the Lord. He will be that in that state of unrighteousness, in that state of sin and vileness all through eternity. For the eternities of eternities, he will be that way. Because... It will be so fast. And the person who is righteous, who is just, and in right standing with God, will remain that way forever and ever and ever because that's the way God finds him when he comes. And he will be caught up with him and stay in that state forever and ever. See, this is the time as we are living now in this age while we are still breathing living, pulsating in this body. This is a time when we have the opportunity and the chances and the opportunities is given us to, to us over and over and over to call on Jesus and to receive Jesus as Lord and as a Savior. The Lord Jesus gives a second prediction, prediction of his swift coming in Revelation chapter 22, verse 12. Behold, I am coming soon and I will bring my wages and rewards with me to repay and render to each one just what his own action and his own work merit. It is very unwise and very foolish to be caught unaware when Jesus comes. See, God as we are living in this dispensation of grace, this age of grace, God, our Lord Jesus, He's a compassionate, loving, merciful, kind, and gracious Savior who laid down His life for the sin of the whole world. Over and over, the Lord has given us chances to accept him. He also gave a third prediction, final prediction of his coming in Revelation 22, 20. He who gives this warning and affirms and testifies to these things says, yes, it is true. Surely I am coming quickly swiftly, speedily. Amen. So let it be. Yes. Come, Lord Jesus. The three occurrences of the final prediction in the final chapter of the Bible occurs in Revelation chapter 22, verse 7, verse 7, verse 12, and verse 20. And these words were not given by an angel to John. These words were speaking directly from the mouth of Jesus 
to John. If you read in a, a red letter edition Bible, you will, you will notice those three verses of the coming of the Lord Jesus in Revelation 22, they're all written in red. And my friend, red words, words never fail. Red words come to pass. Red words win. Those are the words of Jesus. So, as I'm telling you that Jesus predicted his coming, all through the Bible tells us about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe tonight the Holy Spirit probably tugging on your heart, convicting you to heed and to listen to that prophecy of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the final prediction, the final prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. If the Lord is talking you at your heart, then my friend, don't put it off. Don't wait for another moment. Don't wait for another day. Don't procrastinate because you don't know. You won't have time in that split nano second to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. At the end of this message, I will extend the invitation for you to accept Jesus and receive him as your Lord so that you will not be caught off, off guard when the Lord comes. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 7 and 8. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as happened in the rebellion. My friend, if God is speaking to you, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, this is the day, this is the moment, this is the hour to surrender your, Lord, your all to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then 2 Corinthians 6, 2. Behold, now is truly the time for a gracious welcome and acceptance of you from God. Behold, now, today, at this very moment, is the day of salvation. See, as we are living in this age of grace, we have every opportunity as we are breathing. Turn on the TV, you will hear a preacher might be preaching to you. Go on social media, you might see so many scripture verses people posting and preaching and saying all around God is speaking but if you hear his voice today harden not your heart see we live and exist in time and in space God lives and exists in eternity he is forever and ever and ever. He never grow old, he never slumber, he never sleep, he never get tired. We on the other hand, we grow, we grow old, we, we get tired, we age and eventually we die. And one day, as we step out of time and space from this natural realm and step over into the supernatural realm, into eternity, will either spend eternity with God in heaven or will be separated and banished forever from his presence. The moment we cross from this natural realm into the supernatural realm and open our eyes in eternity's morning, there will be no second chance. There will be, not, there, there, there will be no more opportunity given to us then. Now is the time. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Your eternity and my eternity depends on our individual choices that we make right now as we are alive, breathing, living, pulsating. What? are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do 
with Jesus' final prediction of his coming, final prophecy of his coming. Reject him, mock him, criticize him, criticize the Bible, or accept him, surrender to him, and yield your all to him. What choice you make depends your eternal destiny. One day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. You and I will either do it now, today, while we are alive, or we'll do it in the future, before the great white throne judgment, when it's too late. And when we'll be spending eternity in deep regret Jesus is there forever it's all about Jesus he is from everlasting to everlasting he is from eternity past present eternity future he's the same yesterday today and forever Jesus is the bookends of creation time space and eternity you can never escape jesus he is there forever and ever revelation 22 13 i am the alpha and the omega the first and the last the before and the end of all and let's let's look at the meaning of these words alpha alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet. Omega is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. If Jesus were to come in this room with you, with us here and with you there, and he, he wouldn't say Alpha and Omega, that he would say, I am the A and the Z, the first and the last letter. I am the first and the last. First denotes that he is first in time or, or place in any succession of things or of persons. He is first. Then it says last. At the last, finally, till the end, he is still there. He's the beginning, the before the beginning. He is before the origin or the beginning of all things. And then he says, he is the end. At the end of it all, when time, space, and creation ceases to exist, he is still there. No one can remove him. He forever exists. It's all about Jesus, my friend. You see, it's everything about Jesus. We are nothing. He is everything. He is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is God. Jesus is King. Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the provider. He is sustainer. He is the sovereign God. We need him. He don't need us. We need him. We need Jesus. I need him more and more every day. I just can't live without Jesus. How about you, my friend? I need him, you need him, but the whole world needs Jesus today. All true scripture from Genesis to Revelation is filled and is packed with the prediction of the coming of the Lord Jesus. The first one already fulfilled when he came on that first Christmas as the Messiah, stripped, emptying himself of his divine glory and incarnate and born as a man, as a baby. That first prediction of his coming, prophecy of his coming is already fulfilled. And just as that first coming was fulfilled 
to the very dark. His second coming is also certain, unsure, in complete accuracy. And he's coming speedily, swiftly, in a split nanosecond, instantly. So we talk about the Bible's final prediction. Number two, the Bible's final invitation. In recent years, in the continent of South Afri of Africa, Reinhard, evangelist Reinhard Bonnke, held large open-air crusades and preached to a crowd of about up to and over one million people. People of all religion, class, races came to, the, to, the, to these crusades and were saved, delivered, and set free. I listened to one of Reinhardt's messages, and he said, from the time of 1986 to almost when he went home to be with the Lord, over 75 million people got saved just under his ministry. And those are documented numbers with these individuals signing decision cards of accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior. Evangelist Billy Graham, who also went home to be with the Lord, he speak and preach to some 215 million people in 185 countries. And their messages are still out there. People still listen to them and people still get saved through these evangelists. The large crusade is used with the word evangelism. Evangelism can take place in this large crusade format and also one-on-one -on -one over a cup of coffee in a coffee shop or sitting someone next, next to someone in a park or somewhere. Crusade evangelists, they are using their spiritual gift and answering their call that God placed upon their lives. They are preaching the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and people are getting saved. The Lord confirmed his word with signs following. We may, we maybe not, we to call to go and preach in a crusade, but we can do it to our neighbors, to our friends. We can witness and tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. We can extend this final invitation that the Lord Jesus sets out in the final book of the Bible. Jesus himself also commissioned us in Mark 16, verse 15 and 16. Go into all the world and preach and publish openly the good news, the gospel, to every creature of the whole human race. Jesus tells us here to go and preach, to extend the invitation of his saving grace into the whole world, that people be saved. That's how I was saved. Someone witnessed to me. That's how we were all saved. That's how you were saved. Someone told you about Jesus or somewhere you heard somebody talk about the goodness, the Savior, the love of Jesus. That's how we were. Someone tell us. Someone came and tell us. Jesus commissioned us to go and tell, go and preach. So we see as we extend this invitation and the person receive it, they become born again, twice born of the <clears throat> word of God and of the spirit of God. Change, 
transform from death to life, <clears throat> from the curse to the blessing, from darkness to light in Jesus. So this final invitation also, as we receive that invitation, we also have the responsibility to extend that invitation to others as we receive and get saved. If you are listening to him today, you also have that responsibility to extend the invitation to others. Revelation 22, 17. The Holy Spirit and the bride, the church, the true Christians say, come. And let him who is listening say, come. So the Holy Spirit and the bride, that's the church, say come how does the holy spirit say come as i'm as i'm preaching the gospel message today as preacher preach in their churches over television over radio as they speak it is the holy spirit the spirit of god who lives and abides in them speak through them the gospel message so the holy spirit and the bride the holy spirit Speak through the bride, speak through the church, the true Christians, and say, come. I'm saying to you, come tonight to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will find life. Come to him, and you will have eternal life. And then the verse goes on to say, and let him who is listening say, come. You are listening, you have the responsibility also to extend that invitation. And let everyone come who is thirsty, who is painfully conscious of his need of those things by which the soul is refreshed, supported, and strengthened. You need refreshment, support, and strength to your soul, then come to Jesus. And listen to this. And whoever, some translation will say, whosoever, and whoever earnestly desire to do it, let him come. Whoever honestly desire to live forever, to have eternal life, the, the, ex, the, the final invitation is extended. Let him come, take appropriate, and drink the water of life without cost. You don't have to pay for it. Salvation is a free gift. Jesus extends his final invitation to everyone. Whoever, Isaiah 55, 1, wait and listen, everyone who is thirsty. Come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy, and eat. Yes, come buy priceless spiritual wine and milk without money and without price, simply for the self-surrender that accepts. The blessing. You see, salvation is a free gift. You don't have to do anything to earn salvation. Only come as a child to Jesus. Believe and receive and you shall be saved. You don't have to pray so many times a day. You don't have to strap yourself with a bomb and go and suicide bomb and killing people. No. Salvation is a free gift. Only believe Jesus, and you will have eternal life. Revelation 22, 14. Blessed, happy, and to be envied are those who cleanse their garments that they may have the authority and the right to approach the tree of life and to enter through the gates into heaven. You want to approach the tree of life drink of the river of life and approach the holy celestial city of heaven and most of all see the face of jesus then receive and come to that bible's final invitation those who reject jesus's final Invi invitation to come 
will remain outside in their state as they are forever and ever. And we can read that in Revelation 22, 15. But without are the dogs. The dogs doesn't mean animal. It means those who are spiritual rejected. Those who spiritually rejected the Lord Jesus as their Savior. But, those, but without are the dogs and those who practice sorceries, magic arts, and impurity, the lewd, adulterers, and the murderers, and idolaters, and everyone who loves and deals in falsehood, untruth, error, deception, cheating. So, my beloved friend, tonight, Jesus extends the final invitation. The Holy Spirit extends this final invitation. The church extends this final invitation. Those who are listening extend this final invitation. Come to Jesus before it's too late. What are you going to do with this invitation? Are you going to receive it in your hands, look at it, and say, Oh, this is not for me? shred it to pieces and toss it or will you receive this invitation with joy and come to Jesus it depends on you but time is ticking time is going and when if Jesus is to come swiftly in that split nano second a billion of a second tonight you won't have that time to repent then so now is the time receive that final invitation so we talk about the Bible's final prediction the Bible's final invitation dream, number three dream. the Bible's final warning the master author of the Bible is the Holy Spirit he moved upon the hearts of over 40 people all over the world and they wrote the sacred pages over a period of 1600 years without error and contradiction. The Bible is the only book that you will read and the, having the author sitting or standing right next to you, the only book in the whole world. What is it about this book that causes people to give their lives for it, that causes oppressors to try to destroy it, that causes religious people to criticize and to burn it and to destroy it? It is the very God breathed, God inspired word of God. The Bible is living. It's God speaking to us. Is that you read the Bible two way? One way to criticize it or the other way to hear from God. And whichever way you approach a Bible, that is how you will receive. If you approach a Bible to hear from God, you will hear from God. If you approach a Bible to criticize it, you will not hear from God. God. In today's society, the Holy Bible is being criticized, mocked, burned, trampled upon, and even these days people change and alter the text of the Bible. Many over the years have taken out text and they also try to add new ones to change the message. Yet, all these people who hated the Bible down the centuries, they all died. But the Bible continue to live. And it will be there forever and ever because Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. But my words will never pass away. They will stand forever. God's word is from everlasting to everlasting. Many religious people 
they don't read their own religious book. They read the Bible more than what they read the their book. Just to criticize it, but the Bible is true without error and con contradiction. Everything we've seen in the world today is what the Bible predicted centuries ago. It's holy, the Bible is true, the Bible is genuine. Revelation 22, 6. Everything you have heard and seen is trustworthy and true. The Lord God who inspires his prophet, his prophets has sent his angel to tell his servant what will happen soon. Revelation 3, 4, 14, the New Living Translation. With this letter to the angel of the church in Laodicea, this is a message from the one who is the Amen. The faithful, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of God's new creation. This message is faithful and true. It will never fail. It will stand forever and ever. The Bible is a book of books, unlike any other books. You see, my friend, never make the mistake to remove anything from the Bible or to add anything for the Bible. The Bible is unchanging. Never try to alter or change its text. The Bible is faithful. It's a faithful and true word of God. And the Bible has been proven to be true and accurate prophetically, archaeologically, scientifically. It's proven by the resurrection of Jesus. And it's proven by the thousands and thousands of original manuscripts. Revelation 22, 18, 19. I personally, this is Jesus, solemnly warn everyone who listened to the statements of the prophecy, the predictions and the consolation and admonition pertaining to them. In this book, if, it, if anyone shall add anything to them, God will add and lay upon him the plagues, the afflictions, and the calamities that are recorded and described in this book. And if anyone cancels or takes away from the statements of the book of this prophecy, these predictions relating to Christ's kingdom and its speedy triumph, together with the consolation and admonitions or warning pertaining to them, God will cancel and take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the city of holiness, purity and hallowedness, which are described and promised in this book. See, never take away or add to the Bible. Solomon, the, I, I mean Proverbs, the book of wisdom, Solomon wrote and tells us in Proverbs 30, verse 5 and 6, every word of God is tested and refined like silver. He is a shield to those who trust and take refuge in him. Do not add to his words or he will reprove you and you will be found a liar. So we talk about the Bible's final prediction, the Bible's final invitation, the Bible's final warning. Number four, the Bible's final prayer. In today's society, we are seeing less and less prayer meetings in church, less and less prayer in individuals' lives. There is a falling away in the church, less and less prayer. People are not praying as they should. The, the Word of God tells us pray without season, but still. In the churches today, there are many organizers, but few organizers. There are many players, but few prayers. There are many pastors, but few wrestlers. There are many fears and few tears. There are too much fashion and less passion. Many writers but few fighters. There are many gossipers, 
unless, unless intercessors. The Bible admonishes us and tells us to pray without ceasing. No person is greater than his prayer life. The pastor and the preacher who is not praying is playing. And the Christian who is not praying is training. We need to pray. We need to get our, on our knees and pray more and more. Our world, our government, our country, our family, our church, our schools, our community need prayer. Will you pray for them? The Bible gave us the final call to prayer. Throughout the scripture, we see men and women down on their knees, praying. Daniel, David, Hannah, Samuel, the, pro the, the major prophets, the minor prophets, John, Peter, James, Paul, Jesus, they all prayed. Every battle we will ever won must first be won on the knees. We have, we need we should be praying. Jesus himself in Revelation 22, verse 7, verse 12, and verse 20, three times, he assures us of his sudden, swift coming in a split nanosecond, one billionth of a second. Revelation 22, verse 20 to verse 21. He who gives this warning and affirms and testifies to these things say, yes, it is true. Surely I am coming quickly, swiftly, speedily. Amen, so let it be. Yes, come, Lord Jesus. The grace, blessing, and favor of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, be with all the saints. God's holy people, those who set apart for God, to be as it were exclusively His. Amen. So be it. Right after Jesus warns of His final coming, the apostle, the disciple John, prayed the Bible's final prayer. John says, Yes, even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. And he ends with Amen, which means, so be it. My friend, today, the world is getting darker and darker. War with Russia, Ukraine, war with Israel, Hamas, war gun violence, domestic violence, fraud, corruption, every sort of diabolical, sinister thing is plaguing our planet like never before. We need to pray. We need Jesus. We need, and we should heed the Bible's final prediction, the Bible's final invitation, the Bible's final warning, and the Bible's final prayer. Thank God we have this blessed hope in Jesus that he is swiftly coming and he will take us away out of this sin-infested, sin-plagued world. Are you ready for his coming? Are you ready when Jesus comes in that one billionth of a second for his church. Are you ready to be with him? Are you sure? Do you have the assurance of your salvation tonight? If someone walk up to you and ask you, knowing you are a Christian, and they ask you, my friend, if you die or if the Lord Jesus come tonight, are you assured, do you have the assurance of your salvation? Are you born again? What will be your answer be? Maybe, or I'm not sure, you need to be 
sure. You have to have. You need to have the assurance of your salvation. If you're not sure if you are if you are saved, if you've never given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ today, right now I'm giving you, extending that final invitation to you to accept Jesus. Pray this prayer with me, and Jesus will be Lord. If He comes in that split nanosecond, you'll be caught up with Him. Father, thank you for your word. Lord, I submit and surrender to you. I heed that final prediction, final invitation. I come, final warning, final prayer. I want to be saved, Lord. I open my heart and invite you, Lord Jesus, come. Take permanent residence in me. Change me. Transform me into the person you created me to be. Take my life and do something with it. And use me for your glory. Lead me to go to a church where I'll be taught the word. And grow with all the other believers. Surround my life with godly people. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, if you pray that prayer, you're now saved, born again, and Jesus is your Lord. Sunday is coming. Find a church, go to church, read your Bible, pray, and surround yourself with godly people. Listen to faith-filled preaching and grow in your faith. Well, join us again next Thursday night for another study. And until then, remember, God loves you. We love you. And be blessed, be empowered to prosper and excel in every areas of your life. Spirit, soul, body, financially and socially. In Jesus' name, be blessed. Bye-bye.